So Darius, just simply, how, how'd you feel you did today? Were, were there nerves going into this? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, preparing for this my whole life really. And the day was here and it, it came really quick. I feel like I did really well. My numbers were great. Uh, a lot of scouts said my position work was great. Now it's, you just gotta just keep on working in, in terms of, you know, get ready for the draft and get ready for after. Cody Nesper. Uh, Darius, now that you're kind of, you know, nearing the draft, um, as you reflect on your decision last year to, to come back for your senior year, how, you know, how do you think it went and how do you think it benefited you? Oh, it benefited me a lot. You know, just uh, as being a mature aspect, you know, knowing that like this extra year of college underneath my belt helped me realize a lot in terms of leadership, in terms of really just being able to be the best ball player I can be mentally you know, to take that step into the NFL. So definitely benefited me more than I ever thought it would. And I'm glad I stayed. John Antoni. How much has your dad uh, helped you, giving you advice uh, for these workouts? And, and I'm assuming that um, this is part of the process, but playing football is what you really enjoy the most. Yeah, so my dad helped me out a lot throughout the process. Uh, my mom also did too. You know, my dad just taught me really just the financial part of it, you know, into man, how to manage your money and to make sure you don't spend it over the broke. My mom helped me with the emotional aspect of it as in just, you know, God here, well, God was here with me and uh, I worked a lot. I worked very hard to get to this moment and, you know, he's going to be with me throughout the whole time. And I, I felt, I felt he was, so I, I did really, I did really well. So they kind of uh, played off each other a little bit, the emotional yeah, part, the practical part. If you know my mom, you know, she's an emotional human being. So she <laughs> wants to make sure her baby boy is doing well. And my dad just learned, you know, he's more of the, the realist, you know, about being a man in terms of just really just being a mature man. So, yeah. And last thing here, um, this part of it, I guess it's just a necessary part of what you got to do. Playing football is what you're, you, you enjoy the most. Yep. Oh, definitely for sure. And at the end of the day, you know, we do all this testing, but at the end of the day, it's football. And I've been doing that my whole life and we've been pretty successful at it. So that's one thing you guys got to keep in mind. Harley Nevis. Darius, coach was saying that you look slimmer since he saw you um, three months ago. How have you transformed your body? Just how much weight have you lost that allowed you to uh, ball out today at the pro day? Uh, so, yeah, I at the end of the season, I was around 290-ish. And uh, I went to Florida for two months. We was on a meal plan, a lot of training, a lot of uh, uh, position-specific things. And uh, so I lost 12 pounds, around 278. I uh, spoke to a lot of teams. They want me to gain the weight back, which I'm going to, but really just these last two months of training for like the underwear Olympics, they say. So, uh, yeah, so really just now I gotta, I'm going to gain my weight back and get to a, a good weight for these teams. <laughs> Cody Nesper. Darius, I'm just wondering, um, you know, what teams have you talked to already and, and what are you hearing from them about, you know, what they like about you or what they want you to work on? So I've talked to about 12 teams already, uh, and they all really just like my quickness, my intensity, my motor. And they like how mean I play, regardless of my, you know, me being undersized and whatever that's supposed to mean. But really just my tape, they like how explosive I am. They like how hard I work. And just showing it today, they saw how explosive I am in person. And they, they, show off, they showed how fast I was, how quick I was in person. So, And they all said I had great numbers, great combines, great, great really everything. So and that, and that really took a lot of weight off my shoulders. Back to Gonzalo from No Huddle, Argentina. Hey, Darius, how are you? Uh, I want to ask you, uh, what kind of, of players do you like to see when you you watch a professional a, a match at the professional level? So I watch Aaron Donald, Grady Jarrett. I watch Puna Ford. A lot of the undersized details in the league. You know, I'm six, I'm six foot one, two eighty. And uh, they're really all the same, we're all the same weight, and they're very successful at it. So why not watch someone that's successful? So that's really the thing I do. You know, there's a lot of D linemen I watch also, but just the main guys I watch is uh, Grady Jerry, Aaron Donald, and uh, Puna Ford. John Antoni. Darius, uh, curious, uh, has anybody talked to you about standing up, or has it all been playing down? Yeah, no one's really told me about, uh, you know, talking about standing up, but I, I, can, I can do it. So, you know, if they want me to, I'll do it. I was going to say, you did that a little bit here, and they did a little variety with you. You think that's helped you a little bit? Oh, for sure. It definitely helped me show my versatility and it shows, you know, I can get out, get off the ball in a two-point or three-point. So, really just be able to show my athleticism. Mm -hmm. Greg Hunter. So, Darius, obviously, you know, circumstances prevent it, but do you feel like you've been gypped out of the normal combine experience? 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, it is, it is what it is. You know, you control what you can control. But really, at the end of the day, we got we got to do just as, the same drills as we would at the combine. And, you know, we got the gear. We got, uh, you know, pretty much everything we usually would get, but just not being in this part of that kind of gets everybody. But at the end of the day, you, you got to control what you can control. And uh, I can't control certain, the circumstances, but at the end of the day, we just got, we got the job done. Mookie Hawkins from Power 96.5 Radio. Mookie Hawkins, Ruffle Sports 1080. How's it going? So. Hey, um, how has your time at, 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 at West Virginia prepared you for this moment? Oh, prepared me 100%. Just, just with, you know, with thanks to Mike Joseph, you know, being here for my whole college career and just being able to show me really how hard of work you got to do in order to succeed. And people come into college not really knowing the things that you got to do in order to succeed. And Coach Mike, you know, it's more of us being a man. You know, being a man is more of being accountable of your actions and being able to just live up to the, you know, sometimes, you know, we're all human, we all mess up. Back in the day, people respect you if you admit it. And that's one of the things he taught us and just being able to work hard and overcome adversity and just be able to work as hard as we can work. I'm not sure if you've been asked this question already, but uh, how many teams have you been in contact with? Uh, there's, been, there's been a lot. I'd say about 12 teams. I'd say 12, 13, yeah. Uh, and they all just really just told me, it's all introductory. But like since, you know, after the, since this combine just got over with, really, they're going to start calling more. And uh, I've talked to the Bengals the most. They called me every other day, basically. And uh, they like me a lot. And they showed me they showed me some love in there also. So really just a lot of teams. But at the end of the day, I don't know where I'm going to go to. My name is called the draft. So I'm just, I'm just staying humble and keep working. It's an exciting time for you and your family, man. Good luck. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Joe Bricotto. Hey, Darius, when obviously you have conversations with more teams as you get closer to the draft, but for the teams you've talked to so far, is it more X's and O's talking about how you may fit or is it more personal stuff and them just wanting to get to know you as a person? Yeah, it's more personal stuff uh, in order like, to see what type of person we are, what type of player we are, and them asking us and, and seeing if we know what type of player we are individually. So really just trying to pick our brains, trying to figure out who we are as people, and then as this draft starts to get closer and closer, especially after pro day it just happened, they're going to start calling us to, you know, really just start the whole process. So I'm, I'm excited. Back to Carly Nevis. So, Darius, what does this next month look like for you um, heading to the draft? Uh, so, I think I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I'm going to go back to Florida and, uh, you know, train down there for, you know, OTAs or working mini camp, really whatever the future holds for, you know, me as a player. So, and, um, but as of right now, for the next week, I'd say, it's just going to, you know, be with my family as, as much as I can. Because, you know, this is really the only time that I'll have to really spend my family before I go off to play football where God knows where. So just to stay with my family and just uh, cherish these times while I have it. You plan to watch the draft at home in Fairmont, or Florida? So I, I think I'm, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to get like a hotel or a suite or something just to watch it because, you know, uh, I think the draft's going to sit and like cameras over where I'm at because, you know, I guess I'm supposed to get picked in the draft. So. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, and that's really it. But at the, at the end, I don't know. I'm, I know just as much as really everybody else right now. So until they tell us what's going on, uh, I'm just – I don't really know that much. John Antoni. And last one here. Um, what is your team uh, worked up, focused with on you uh, uh, getting ready for the draft? What, what are some of the things they've been working with you with? Uh, just really my mental, seeing where like, you know, how my reaction time and really just being able to see what type of player I am up here. Cause they see me on film, but they just want to see what goes through my head or, or how I think of things, how I come up with things. So really just trying to get our minds, uh, our minds, our mental like there. Has it been helpful for you? Oh, for sure, yeah. And, uh, dude, like, because we take a lot of psychological tests, mm -hmm. you know, through, like, the process of the drafts, just to see our reaction time, like, what I just said. But uh, it's, it's helped us a lot just to me to get a better idea of how serious the NFL really is and how, you know, serious they – or how much accountable, accountable they hold you because they're investing a lot of money into you and they don't want somebody that's, uh, that's off the street doing making bad decisions for them to play for them. So really just being able to see what type of player we are. Do you, do you view this as a way to enhance yourself or a way to not harm yourself? And, you know, you can look at it two ways when you work out in these things. You know, uh, you're, you're looking for reasons why not to pick you or reasons why to pick you. I think, I think it's reason, like, 
I think it's reasons to pick me. You know, there's a lot of people that say, uh, oh, undersized or right. or they're all trying to like see what all the to get as many negative things out of you as they can or they're uh, investing money into. But the way I see it is, all right, they see the only downfall I have is just my my, my size. But I can do everything else just as much as everybody else can. Besides, I don't really mean nothing to me. So, they just, so to me, I think it's just to see what things that, that I can bring to the table for the team. And did, did uh, Neil mention this? Do you think playing in the bowl helped you in, the, in their eyes? Oh, for sure. Definitely. And just really, I want to say just helped me in their eyes, just helped me from my own, my own uh, individual you know, perspective. Because it took a lot just to be able to play that game, knowing, knowing that I could get hurt. They were knowing that some one wrong snap could just lead mess up my whole career. But at the end of the day, I wanted to go out there and fall off my teammates, and I didn't care about that because there, there's a job attack, a task at hand, and we just need to get it done. Plus, their style, the way they were on your legs. Yeah, that was the most, uh, you know, difficult part, like difficult decision. You know, if we would have played a regular team, then it wouldn't have been such a difficult decision for me yeah. to make. But at you know, playing Army and the way they come off the ball, try to cut you, that's definitely a difficult decision. But I just know that I can help my team best if I if I play. Nesper. Darius, real quick, just um, you've mentioned him a couple times, but do you think the success of someone like Aaron Donald has kind of just opened up the perception about, you know, guys like you who aren't that prototypical 6'4", 6'5", defensive tackles? I think I think he's definitely changed the narrative a lot. But at the end of the day, people, you know, Aaron Donald did it, but there's more of us out there. So we just got to just keep on, just gotta keep on passing the torch. We got to keep on having this tradition going and going and going because Aaron Donald, they say Aaron Donald is just a once in a generational player, but I'm trying to just, you know, change the narrative also with that and just have me come along and do it too. Just not knowing that, okay, only one underside in fact will do it. There's a lot of them that can't, but yeah, definitely. Any further questions for Darius? Okay, Darius, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys.